much for uh, joining um, this evening for our uh, virtual uh, Bhakti Vriksha. So last time we had a really nice discussion on uh, faith and uh, I'm sorry, on freedom. And uh, we kind of concluded with uh, uh, with an interesting, if not expected, um, conclusion that uh, uh, this uh, uh, illusion of freedom is just that. There really is nothing like absolute uh, freedom because by nature, we are not, that, that is not the intrinsic nature of the soul. So we had discussed how, um, uh, from a spiritual perspective, we are dependent on Krishna. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, in the concluding verse, Sardhan Pratyaja Mahami Kam Sharnam Brajaham Tum Sarpape Bimoksha Mimasucha. So, what does he say? He says that, that Sardhan Pratyaja Maam Ekam Sharnam Braj, that takes shelter of me, which means that I will protect you. So, that's not the position of one who is free. One who is free will protect others, but one who is not free will need protection. In uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita, Mahaprabhu says, Jivere uh, Sarupoy, Krishna Nityadas. So the eternal nature of the soul is to serve Krishna. Even from a material perspective, we are not free. We are dependent on so many things for protection. So, um, when we were defining absolute freedom, so one of the things that came in as input from you all, as points of discussion, was uh, absolute freedom means absolute freedom from fear. So I wanted to take that as a topic of discussion this week with your permission and blessings that uh, if we can talk about uh, what does it mean to be fearless or what what is the anatomy of fear where does it take birth where it is nourished how does it grow and ultimately <clears throat> what is it that we can do with it So, uh, we are all intimately aware of the emotion of fear. We have experienced it ourselves in different spheres. For uh, all of you who have gone to school, which all of you have, <clears throat> the feeling that you get before the exam, the feeling that you get when you wait for the results to be declared, That is, that, that is probably our first experience with real fear. And then as we grow older, our engagement with fear becomes more and more pervasive and intimate. So, <clears throat> uh, the, the question still remains that what is the cause of fear? Now, uh, as an as an emotion, we can define fear, right? We can say that you know fear is a fear is a sense of helplessness. It's a sense of anxiety. It is an emotional reaction. It has uh, it has a it has a physical uh, uh, connotation to it. Uh, people uh, uh, people have uh, uh, have. Uh, uh, heart attacks because of fear, people lose their mental balance because of fear. 
But what is the cause of fear? What are the causes of fear? So, so perhaps, perhaps we can do a little bit of brainstorming on that. That what do we think are the now there are many secondary causes of fear like i said fear of exam or fear of your boss or or uh, or you know uh, so many other secondary causes of fear we deal on a daily basis but if we had to look at it at a causal level at a root level uh, what would we say is the root cause for fear I'm going to I'm going to unmute. I noticed uh, uh, Okay. Yeah. First thing comes in the mind is insecurity. Like we it's 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 all tra transient here, like you know, temporary everything. So So there is no guarantee of tomorrow. So is it insecurity or impermanence? Insecurity, insecurity yeah. And in, because of impermanence, both. Okay. Thank you. Material attachment, Prabhuji? Or any attachments for that matter? Attachment. Okay. So we have insecurity because of impermanence. We have attachment, cause of fear. Any other thoughts? Our desires not getting satisfied, like, you know, like our senses, I guess. Okay. So fear of unfulfilled desires. Uh, Prabhuji, uh, <coughs> this is a annoying. I think it's freedom of unknown. Fear of unknown. That is uh, insecurity too, you know. Thank you, Prabhu. Fear of unknown. Thank you. These are all really good points. Thank you for making them. Anybody has any any more thoughts? Yeah, Prabhuji, the fear of losing happiness. Hmm. Hmm. Fear of losing happiness.
Good, thank you. So, um, so I heard a lot of uh, a lot of very good points uh, here. So I wanted to uh, to give you a little bit of an uh, experiential uh, glimpse into the anatomy of fear. So I'm sure you have all watched scary movies, right? And you watch the scary movie and you're scared. There's that, there may be some scene, there's, there's suspenseful music going on and you know, suddenly something happens. Somebody jumps out of the shadow or does something and you know, and, and, and you are, you know, you jump at the same time. Now, if you rewind the movie and watch it again, what's your reaction to the same scene? So the fear index goes from like very high to zero. Why is that? Now, it does not, it does not make a difference whether that scene ended in a good way or a bad way. So the scene may have ended with the person getting killed or the scene may have ended with the person escaping. But it does not matter one way or the other. But the matter of fact is that because you're watching it again, that sense of fear is gone. Now, what is the difference between watching it the first time and watching it the second time? The difference is that the second time round, you know what is going to happen. Whether it is good or bad, you know what is going to happen. And that itself completely drives away fear. So I think almost all of you in one way or the other touched on this aspect that the fear of unknown. We don't know what's going to happen. There is this famous saying by, uh, um, I forget the name of the person. He's a Christian pastor. And then he says that my whole life has been full of terrible things, terrible, terrible things have, in, have, uh, are, uh, have happened in my, are there in my life. Some of them actually happened. So the point that he was making is that most of the time what we are fearing is the unknown, the what if scenario. It's an empty road and what if I cross it and a road and a car hits me or what if fill in the, uh, 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 fill in the, the blank. And this uh, fear of the unknown is the most is the most intrinsic emotion in material existence so it is said that everybody is doing four things ahar bhaya nidra maithunya that's what the life of a conditioned soul is Ahar bhaya nidra maithunya. Eating, sleeping, waiting, defending. But when we ultimately look at it, the other three are based on bhaya, which is fear. Why do we eat? Because we are fearful that if we don't, we'll die. We are fearful that 
we may get diseases or a body will become weak. Why do we sleep? To keep our body and our mind focused. Then maithunya, the, the desire to procreate. That is our, that is our, our ultimate protection against the fear of death. That I may die, but I will continue to live in my offsprings. They will be a part of me that will, that will not die in posterity. So the sense of fear is what is driving all our impulses in, in our material existence. Now, if you look at the impact of fear, so human beings are not the only ones that fear. We see that in animals, we see that in, in different organisms. Now, if you look at the impact of fear, then those that are lower on the evolutionary scale are more fearful. So Srila Prabhupada would say that uh, when the bird gets up in the morning, it is just thinking about two things. Where is my food? And will I be food for somebody else? So it is looking to, it is looking to sustain its body out of fear of death. And it is looking to protect itself from a predator out of fear of death. So their whole existence is based on fear. Amongst the humans who are more, who are more uh, evolved, the impact of fear is lesser. So an animal is constantly looking, so sometimes we have deer in our, in our uh, in our backyard and then it's interesting to watch them that they will they they will eat for a few seconds and then after that they will stop and they will look around and then again they will eat for a few seconds and then they will again stop and they will look around and this is in an area where they have no natural predators there are no lions or wolves or Whoever hunts deer, now there are cars that kill them, but uh, that's different. But, but that fear is so intrinsic in them that they spend more time acting on the platform of fear in their lives than everything else combined. Now, amongst humans, that fear is not that predominant. So we, so we don't walk out and uh, with the sense that if I cross this street, is somebody waiting to pounce on me and attack and eat me or kill me? So the difference between an animal and a human is the, the increase of the understanding, the level of intelligence. So the question is that, that having identified the cause of fear as that of unknown, what, what would be the most potent way for us to address fear? Because living in fear is definitely not the way to go. So there was, there was a survey that was done of young, young people in uh, somewhere in Europe and they discovered that on average every person had 14 kinds of fear in different categories fear of losing your job fear of losing the loved ones fear of bad health so 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 uh, uh, this is that's a lot of fear and this is us we are at the top of the of the pyramid. We are at the top of the evolutionary scale. 
So this is the amount of fear and this is in a first world country. So can you imagine in places where there is violence, there is strife, that fear is magnified several, several times over. So how do we address the fear? It's not a healthy state for us to live in. So scientifically, they say that living in a state of fear, it affects so many parts of your, of your, so many aspects of your existence. It causes hypertension, high blood pressure. It causes memory loss. There's a part of the, of a brain that is triggered when one is experiencing fear and it creates a heightened sense of tension. And staying in that for a long period of time, it's, it's, like, it, it, it's like staying hot for a long time and things start burning up. So what is your sense that how do we, how do we address this notion of fear with the intention of not being situated in fear or reducing our interaction with fear. Uh, on that note, like generally, how I deal with this with acceptance notion, like uh, because you know sometimes when you know a thought comes, I will take it to the worst possible scenario. And keep myself and see what happens then. So even then, like most likely, at least I will get food and, you know, uh, uh, so then I prepare myself for that situation, then rest all scenarios will be like nothing. So uh, to a large extent, it helped me and that acceptance. Thank you, Prabhu. story like a little story on that i remember that when i joined bhu like banaras Hindu university at that time you know i met one uncle you know he came to uh, he brought his son for an admission there so i think we were sent sitting inside the temple uh, like uh, if you have been to banaras Hindu university you will see there is a temple in the university in the center at the center of the university so I was sitting with him, and this guy will, after each and every sentence, this uncle, he will always say that, Are sab bhole na, So whatever he will say, after that, he will always say, bhole na, So this happened almost, I'm saying, you know, more than almost 20 years it's going to be. So I still remember his, uh, you know, like a statement, you know, like the, after every sentence, he will say that, and he was good. Like he was himself an engineer and doing good. Like he was a good position. So I think that is the best way, you know. Like if you have a fear or something, you are getting that. Just leave it because you cannot do anything, right? So you just leave it, you know. So that's what I think that that is the best way to deal with that. Because if you try to control it, it will come more and more. It will try to bother you. So this is my, you know, like the thinking, you know, that how we should cope up. And it's still, like I'm trying, but it's still, you know, like that is the best way I think that we cope up with such kind of thing. Thank you, Prabhu. That's, uh, that's very interesting. And I, I, I agree with you. I think there are, there are some people who are, uh, who are spiritually advanced. And they have that sense of uh, of uh, dependence, not just in saying, but also also in real terms. And that takes away that takes away a lot of uh, uh, like one of the points that was made by by Seema was that uh, we think we are in control, but if we think that we are not in control, then that fear of uh, what should I do? What should I do? That goes away. Thank you, Prabhu. What else? But uh, okay, there is uh, 
another like similarly kind of a not a story but a metaphor like if suppose you are going in a say cab and you see that uh, there is a and it's going on, on a night in a very like lonely area you might get scared because if the cab driver is like looking scary and all then you may did uh, you'll get fear but is supposing if you have a friend with you who is very strong and guide while well built and you go with him then then the fear factor is very reduced because you know that you have a friend who can protect you in that case. so i guess a shelter is uh, very important here if you have a good shelter like who can protect you then probably your fear uh, you can uh, you can deal with the fear and uh, shelter being shelter of the supreme personality yes. big personality yeah supreme personality good thank you prabhu hari krishna prabhu so in alignment with what everybody said i also feel like you know if you know the consequence like you are fearful of a particular event most of the times you know or of a particular person so if you think in that way that the consequence whatever is going to happen for an event is it taking you closer to krishna or it's taking you away from krishna say if you have a fear of losing your job you know or if you have a fear of any sort so you have to analyze it in sync like what will happen when that event will happen will you what would you want as an outcome of that event is what you have to think Uh, is it taking you closer to krishna or away from krishna probably that will help you gain some strength to come out of that fear hmm hmm interesting good good i think you're making a very interesting con- uh, point and uh, I'd, i'll i'll expand on this uh, later on but thank you for making it hari krishna prabhu um, i can think of two different scenarios so first scenario is such a very young child who doesn't know anything so he is unaware of what is fear all about so he will be fearless he or she will be fearless um and the second scenario is that child gets some experience and understand what's good what's bad so he's fearful but as long as his parents either mother or father wish him or her he is or she is fearless because anything comes my father is the my mother is there to protect so in both the scenarios if we compare that with our own life so the exalted devotee is normally they are so much surrender to the supreme lord they don't want to aware of what's going on in their life good or bad it really doesn't matter to them and probably for people who are starting like you know um, in the beginning understanding that that there is a supreme power and supreme lord is there with us all the time being our supreme father that gives a lot of protection that he is there to help us to protect us in every moment of our life mm this is the two scenarios i can think of from mm mm yes mm. uh, one more thought provision like uh, one more thing that uh, generally helps is like uh, on the definition of uh, you know the protection if my definition of protection if i take that out like uh, uh because i i feel that like because i am chanting whatever that will happen that is krishna will do good only for me so when my definition takes out like the uh i can see that anything that happens is kind of protection so that also uh, if something bad happens we can think that you know krishna is still protecting so why worry So you are in the right direction kind of think that gives you okay thank you prabhu so good i think we we have a good collection of uh, of insights into into dealing with fear and i like the i like the way that uh, you presented it through personal experiences or or uh, or uh, analogies um Uh, if if you look at the if you look at the flow in the gita 
to a great extent the bhagavad gita is is dealing with this issue of fear right if the first chapter uh, arjun he is fearful of everything right the whole first chapter is that fearful of sinful reactions fearful of infamy fearful of losing his friends and family so it's just fear 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 what's the first thing that krishna does to address the fear of arjun which is the first set of instructions that krishna gives to arjun that you are not the body you are the soul right the very first instruction natvayam jatu nasham natvayam janatupa na chevena bhavishama sarve vayam ta param never was the time when you did not exist nor i nor all these kings and never will be ever cease to exist now what is the result of accepting that instruction that the fear of death is diminished not only your own death but death of those around you because arjun was not really scared about his own death he looked upon that as a as a as a better case scenario what he was more fearful of was that i kill everybody i am alive and then i have to deal with the consequences that my my uh, i have killed my spiritual master i have killed my grandfather i killed my friends my sons my brothers and then krishna says no how can you kill something that is eternal so that uh, so uh, <coughs> bhurjan prabhu comments on that that krishna through the instructions of sankhya so these are in the category of sankhya sankhya means the ability to to dist- sankhya literally means count but uh, contextually it means the ability to distinguish to discriminate so he's he's sharpening the intelligence of arjun to so that he can deal with better with other anxieties now we take it in our own lives that if if we are anchored on this platform of the of the eternality of the soul and the impermanence of the body then so many fears that are linked around it get dissipated krishna says jatasya dhrumatyur dhrum jas dhrum dhrum janma mritasya cha that he says one who is taken birth is sure to die and one who is dead or who has died is sure to take birth so he says that is why you should not get illusioned so that is our first protection against fear understanding we are not the body and understanding that those around us are also not the body further down krishna goes in bhagavad gita and then he 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 head on addresses arjun's fear and by arjun is he's talking to us through arjun neha vikrama nashasti prathvayo na vidyate that uh, he says a little advancement on this path protects one from the greatest kind of fear and then proper rights in the purport what is the greatest fear so after having accepted your identity as a soul the greatest fear is what is going to 
happen to my Can you hear me, Prabhus? Haribo? Haribo, can you hear me? Yes, Prabhuji. Yes, Prabhuji. Yes, sir. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I thought they banned those, uh, those robo-calling. This, the call came in and it cut me off from Zoom. So fear of robo-calls. So the the next the next assurance that Krishna gives is that because once you understand that you're not the body, you're the soul, then what's your biggest fear? What's going to happen to me after death? There's this uh, um, um, I think Ravindra Sur Prabhu was was giving a lecture on this verse, and then he was he was relating a joke that. Uh, uh, there was a person who had this anxiety syndrome. He was always very, very anxious, and uh, he was going to a he was going to a a psychiatrist. The psychiatrist was working on him. Nothing was nothing worked out. So he says that look, I'm trying to work with you. It's not working out, uh, but I have a I have a uh, an acquaintance who's a Buddhist monk. And then you go to him, and then maybe he can help you. I said, okay. So he went, and then for a while he didn't come. And then when he came again, he was in a really bad shape. His eyes were bloodshot, and his face was all, all his hair was were turning gray. And then his psychiatrist looked at him and said, good Lord, what happened to you? Did you go to that uh, like the Buddhist that I told you about? He said, yeah, yeah, I went to him. He says, what happened? He says, initially I used to worry about what's going to happen in this life. Now I'm worrying about what is going to happen in my next life. So I have two things to worry about now. So, so Krishna in the Gita, he gives his assurance that little bit of advancement. Pratvayona vidyate. That, that, that uh, um, on advancement on what? Advancement in the path of spirituality, he says, will protect you from the most dangerous fear. Prabhupada in the purport writes, the most dangerous fear is losing the human form of life. Is to gliding down to one of the one of the lower species. So just by chanting once, just by offering obeisances to the deities once. Honoring prasadam once, that little. That will assure us at least a human form of life. So, when we couple our philosophical understanding that we are not the body with practice, that we, that we practice that which gives us protection. Now let's move a little bit further on what else we are fearful about and what can help address that fear. So one of the examples that was given, um, I, I, think, I think by Seema or Varsha, was that example of a child. So why is the child fearless? Now partially out of ignorance, that the child doesn't know, ignorance is bliss, doesn't know. 
but more so because it is aware of the fact that someone else is taking care. I remember when I was very, very young, uh, we had gone to attend, there was this huge mela in Prakriti Madan in Delhi and that, that place is like, like huge. And I must have been maybe less, less than three, four years, something like that. So I was holding on to my father's finger and then I was just walking around and, you know, enjoying stuff. And then after some point I left his finger, I lost him. And then suddenly the whole thing, the, the whole perspective changed. And it happened so many years ago, I was so young, but I can remember, I can remember it in a lot of details. That the, everything around me initially was like so exciting. There were clowns and there were balloons and there were people who were juggling and it was all fascinating. And then when I was lost, it all became scary. So all I could see because I was so small, all I could see was, was people's uh, knees and calves and feet. Uh, that I couldn't see above that. It just became a whole forest of, of, uh, of people. And then of course, eventually my father found me and then I again caught on to his finger and, and the whole, the whole perspective changed again. So when, when I was, when, when I was uh, 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 thinking on this topic, you know, that came to me as a very visceral kind of a, of, of a, of a, uh, uh, the way I relate to it is is that if we have if we have shelter of somebody then then that sense of then then that sense of being protected the sense of that i am responsible for my own protection all that gets gets addressed so as long as all you have to do is to to strongly hold on to that finger and if the finger belongs to somebody who is supremely powerful, who does not say, just say, but is capable of protecting you under all situations, then can you imagine the, the, the kind of security that, that you would experience? So, uh, there may be there may be so many causes of fear like i was saying they were saying that every person has was suffering from 14 different causes of of uh, major causes of fear if you include minor they were in hundreds but the solution is is simple that by, by taking shelter. And Krishna, he does not, he does not be, he's not implicit about it. He's explicit about it. So he's not saying that you, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> he's not saying that you figure it out yourself and perhaps if you take shelter of me, things will be okay. So over and over again and again in the Bhagavad Gita, he keeps giving this assurance. The last assurance that he gives is the culmination of all the assurances that he has given. Right? He says, Ma Sucha. Do not fear. Now, we don't aspire to take shelter of Krishna only for the reason of becoming fearless. But Krishna is offering us fearlessness. For Krishna, it's a, 
it's a small secondary thing. But because it is big for us, he's saying, okay, Masucha, you will, you will have no fear. So that's the absence of negative. Of course, Krishna is, is promising us so much more on the positive side. He is promising us eternal life, eternal bliss, relationships that are saturated with love and happiness. He is promising us so many things on the positive side. But he is also promising us this. That he will take away the fear from, from us. Now in terms of practicing how to take shelter of Krishna. So that point was also made by Ravi Prabhu. That what does it mean when Krishna says that I will give you shelter. So does it mean that everything that is a cause of your fear, now Krishna removes it? That if you are fearful of growing old, then Krishna stops you from aging? Or if you are fearful of death, Krishna makes you immortal? Or if you are fearful of failure, Krishna makes you successful? Ultimately, Krishna does all that. He will make you immortal. He will give you eternal bliss. He will make you supremely successful. He will give you that ultimately. But while we are travelling on that journey, what does it mean? When? We say that we are taking shelter of Krishna to become fearless. So this is our position, specifically as practicing devotees. We know we are not the body. So we know also that somehow or else we have to take shelter of Krishna. But the question now is, what does it mean? When we take shelter of Krishna, what does it mean in terms of our interaction with this, this, what do they say, this uh, 600 pound gorilla in the, in, in the, in the room. So what are your thoughts? So the, the point I'm making is, that this is not a theoretical exercise. We are all in the process of trying to take shelter of Krishna. We also have fears. We also know that philosophically Krishna is making all this, giving us all these assurances over and over again. Kontiya pratijayi, name bhaktiya pranashyate. My devotees are never going to perish. So many assurances he keeps making over and over again. But the rubber hits the road in us, in our, in our daily lives, in our daily conceptions. So just want to hear from you that what are your thoughts about the process of taking shelter of Krishna and how has that affected your relationship with fear? Thing is we have to have full faith 
anything, you know. Just saying that I have faith doesn't mean anything, you know. You have to have full faith, you know. And if you, and that uh, friend is Krishna with you all the time, and so your life will be much better, you know. You'll be much happier in life, you know, because uh, you have a friend with you all the time at, at all the key, and you'll be less fearless, less fearful of us. That's all I think. Like uh, Jesus Prabhu said, you know, that gentleman in the temple said, Hari Bol all the time, you know. So this is something uh, you have all the time. This is my thought. Mm, very good. Thank you so much, Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Hare Bhul, Prabhu. Uh, Prabhu, it, um, coming to Krishna consciousness, um, it definitely gives a, a longer perspective or a larger, like, helps us visualize the bigger picture at times um, especially when there are these lows or troughs um, you know it, it's very reassuring obviously through devotees um, to know that uh, you know it could be just a bad day and uh, this is not going to last forever there is definitely a brighter picture at the end of this. So it helps to give that perspective time and again, mm. I feel. Mm. Mm. Very good, very good. Thank you for sharing, Prabhu. Hare Krishna, uh, Prabhuji. Uh, Prabhuji, I was also thinking that now how you are relating fear with Krishna consciousness and the way we started, now my perspective is little bit changing wherein i'm thinking that fear actually is not a very bad thing and uh, i'm th thinking that fear in a way is good because it binds us uh, like also connected to freedom right like we were saying if we are really free to do whatever we want to do unbounded that's a problem now fear combined with freedom binding us to, you know, certain limits, which means controlling our activities and, you know, uh, in a way is very helpful. And uh, from a spiritual perspective, uh, I was also thinking when you had uh, taught us that there are four kinds of people who take to bhakti. And the first category was people who go to temple, uh, uh, you know, out of fear, not to lose and, you know, uh, something or pray to Krishna that, uh, yes, I accept you and uh, just keep me in your, you know, vision and, you know, I am fearful of you, so to say. So just a thought, Prabhuji, that I'm now thinking that fear is actually not a very bad thing if we think it from a spiritual perspective. Mm. That's a very interesting perspective. Thank you for sharing, Prabhu. You asked, it reminds me of Kunti Devi's prayers. Like she said, Krishna to give me pain and suffering so that I keep remembering him, mm. keep thinking about. Him. Mm. 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 Very Just true. Just Very true. Good. Good. These are pretty advanced realizations. Thank you. Uh, Prozi, uh, a few thoughts, Prozi. Just now, you know, Rajneesh Prabhu said, you know, I. Agree on that point, fear helps in that perspective. But I feel that, you know, it, it won't last, Prabhuji, because fear is something, you know, uh, I mean to say, if I am getting happiness by doing some simple reactions, simple activities, then fear can, can only stop to a limit. Beyond that, like, uh, it cannot control. Because if my if I can derive pleasure from certain activities which are not so conducive, but still I will do it at one point of time to a lim to an extent I can restrain. But uh, the the emotion that it triggers within us is not so uh, welcoming, mm. even though that fear fear rest, uh, restricts. Mm. Mm. So, mm. What what so 
so their love takes more precedence love for god and uh, uh, love for other people so that takes precedence mm-hmm. over fear so that is more positive and uh, like the process of taking shelter provision like i could feel that initially it started with seeing the devotees when they appear confident and uh, they openly share about their lows also it gives the confidence that they are telling truth and then we started off although we do not have any experience of shelter but krishna do give the glimpses of fearlessness in terms of when we are really happy that the symptom of fear will not be there within us hmm. even just the matter of we meet in our namahata group so we are happy with that means we think of what are all the fears that morning i thought in the office what are all those things happen now so that is gone so when little bit of that shelter we experienced it gives more motivation to do little more sadhana and we experience more uh, 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 more shelter and over a period certain fears provoke like you know they go without uh, uh, we notice also like certain things like uh, you know even i used it to have something like the cricketers do when they bat they do left right like this so like that the small small things uh, when i acquired i don't know and uh, when i lost also i don't know like uh, you know uh, so that is something uh, the process itself makes you fearless less mm. fearless mm. thank you thank you. thank you okay other thoughts one more thought that i just was having is that um the more attached you are to everything the more fearful you are of everything um because it could be material attachment it could be any kind of love attachment whatever but the more uh, entanglements we have then we are more we become even more fearful like if i have more money i'll become more fearful because i have to uh i have to take care of and you know but the less you have the less because what are you fearing if you don't have anything mm. material or relationship wise or love wise or whatever mm. Mm. and uh, so i feel like uh, how we roll in in krishna consciousness or like you know the minute we feel that okay um i don't know i think it's a journey um uh, and in that journey towards god or towards krishna we kind of develop that uh detachment to all these possessions that we have and in that then that fear kind of alleviates because or escapes you because then you as i think somebody else was saying you start seeing the broader picture and you start seeing seeing the seeing the larger picture in everything mm, mm. and uh, as uh, i think even shivani was saying that uh when uh, when uh, yudhishthir became the king i think kunti devi was very very sad because uh, although her son was pronounced the king of a huge kingdom she was she was i am sure she was happy but then she was very sad because krishna was going to go away with one so i think of course i am nowhere close to that uh, you know but you you know you start you start feeling that there are some there are so such huge personalities that have felt this and that have not gotten attached or to their own sons kingdom or country mm. so i think um, it boils down to the same thing that um the more you know like the fear comes when all these possessions hold you mm. but the minute you start uh moving into bhakti you, you know you you realize that this is there today it could not be there tomorrow right. right and uh and what is the what is the what is the thing that is going to stay with me 
after 50 years when I'm dead or after 100 years. So mm. I think that's what that's that's what I think Krishna consciousness at least has at least that's what my understanding is. Mm, mm, mm. Thank you so much. Uh, wonderful, uh, wonderful Very realizations. Sure. Yes, Prabhu. I was just thinking that in the beginning, um, like the way we define fear as uh, the unknown factor. So the moment we know what is that unknown, so knowing the unknown, that's probably the process that we go through through our Krishna consciousness, understanding that we are not the body, we are the soul, and soul is eternal, and the eternal creator of the Lord. Once you know that that thing is clear, then the rest of the thing which is in the material world doesn't matter. Once someone someone understand that very very clearly, mm. and then to the Krishna consciousness process, also we know that what's coming up. So uh, either you know if, if we are in the journey, then either we get back with a similar kind of body which is conducive to continuing our journey in the same direction. Mm. Or maybe finally we'll, you know, we'll be in the eternal world with the Lord, serving Him eternally. Mm. So that process itself is, you know, gives that overall feeling of fearlessness that yes, we know what's coming up. Even if we die, this is what is going to happen. So I think, you know, that's probably um, you know, mm. what I'm thinking about. Mm. Mm. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you. And, uh, Prabhuji, one small thought, Prabhuji, as uh, our Prabhuji is saying, uh, like the sharpening of our intelligence is uh, uh, helps to control our mind mm -hmm. because uh, because mind play a lot of tricks on us and uh, which makes us you know mentally puts us in scary situations. So by, through, by reading scriptures. Uh, Although we are implicitly doing, not explicitly for that purpose, but that really helps uh, keep right. us aware. Good, thank you. So, all good points. Uh, um, so, in, in the scriptures, so we have two examples. Uh, one of a personality that is completely fearless. And that's Prahlad Maharaj. And the other personality that is completely overcome with fear, which is Kamsa. And then we see the difference in what, what is happening between the two. So we look at the life of Prahlad Maharaj. It's not that everything in his life was going the way that he wanted to. In fact, the opposite. But yet, he is considered to be the, the personification of fearlessness. More so because of the adversities that he was facing. They were all the reason for him to be fearful. That his father was a powerful demon and he wanted to kill him. So for a five-year-old son, the prospect of your own father trying to kill you is pretty daunting. And if your father happens to be the most powerful person in the universe, then it can be so much more so. But if you see the pastime, there was never once that Prahlad Maharaj express internal or external symptoms of fear. There is only one time that he spoke about fear in a different context. So so that that is our so so that is our glimpse into what does being fearless under the shelter of Krishna mean? So what it means is that whether the things are good or bad, whether they are happening according to what you desire or not, the shelter is still there. 
because of that of that confidence in the shelter prad maharaj was fearless everything around him was going against him but he had confidence in that shelter so in the bhagavatam there is a famous verse that is recited by lord brahma and uh, where, where he says that uh, um, um, if one while taking shelter of krishna patiently endures all the good and bad things that are happening to him then for that person krishna's krishna shelter becomes his birthright so for us that is that 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 is a that is a a, a glimpse into the nature of fearlessness that we can aspire for as practicing devotees if we develop that conception then a lot of the other points that we have made will automatically fall in place if we consider krishna to be our protector then we automatically move the focus away from ourselves that i have to do something to protect myself i have to do something to protect my family i have to do something to protect my whoever my relative or my parent so the more you say i i i the more fearful you become at the prospect of failure then the example that was given of the the the, uh, uh, the the sense of detachment that if we if we consider that whatever happens whether we get it or we lose it it is it, it is not ultimately up to us now it does not mean that we become fatalistic because that that itself can contribute to the result but what it means is that despite our best intention and efforts whatever happens is not because of me when uh, dashrath Uh, ancestor was uh, killed by ravan then ravan he did not kill him completely he mortally wounded him because he wanted to he wanted to watch him die and then he wanted to gloat over him so he lay down he was down on the battlefield his body broken bleeding and then ravan comes and he sits by him to watch him die and then the king looks at him and says you should not be happy you should not be proud that you killed me actually you did not kill me and then ravan says what are you talking about we just had a we just had a had a battle we fought with one another and my weapons mortally wounded you i am the one who killed you and he says no i have been killed by the force of my own destiny you are just an instrument and of course for good measure he curses ravan also that a descendant in my dynasty will be the cause of your death but but that that understanding that whatever will happen is destined to happen by the will of krishna it takes away so much of pressure now if you look at if you look at kamsa kamsa is the is is considered to be the very embodiment of fear and if you look at him he had everything he was powerful he had conquered vast amount of kingdoms he had defeated the demigods he was vastly opulent well connected his father in law jarasandh was a great emperor he had deposed his own father and he was he was ruling he had no enemy there was nobody there to 
to to fight him yet he lived in constant fear that sometimes in the future something will happen that will cause me to die and because of that something in the somewhere in the future each and every moment of his life was completely full with anxiety anxiousness anger so that's the opposite that we 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 uh, we, we consider that everything that is happening in my life is going to be just because of me so when kamsa heard that he would be killed by devaki's son he could have done two things he could have said fine if i am going to get killed so be it but in the meantime let me have a good time but he did not he said that i am the master of my own destiny i will make sure that i will kill the cause of my death and because of that he 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 lived a very very unhappy anxious unfruitful life so as we take shelter of 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 krishna if we develop this faith that whether things are happening good or bad they are happening by the mercy of krishna that while we strive to do our best we don't consider ourselves to be the cause of the results that through the process of of uh, reading scriptures we we develop detachment to material things to material body to to that which is connected to the material body so one by one we uproot the thousands of roots that fear has taken in our heart and we enter into the stage of fearlessness now uh, closing i just wanted to make one point that rajneesh and shivani had made it that uh, even when we take shelter of krishna devotees still do have the fear of losing their shelter that is that is the healthy fear so i mentioned that pralad manar does mention fear once and when he prays to lord narsingha dev he says that i don't fear your uh, your form your fearsome looks i i i don't fear your immense power but what i do fear is if somehow or the else i am deprived of the association of your devotees if somehow or the else i am in a position not to serve you or your devotees that i fear similarly in the bhagavatam it is said uh, <clears throat> that uh, you know the, the the person says i do not fear falling into the most abominable hell but i do fear a life where i do not have the shelter of your devotees so that fear we should have we should constantly be fearful that may we not lose the shelter of krishna and his devotee and the way that we are constructed is that what we fear we will work to address it so sometimes people may take association or krishna consciousness for granted but the reality is that once it goes away very very difficult to get it back there are so many devotees in his corn who will attest to it 
same statement they will make that please don't take it for granted. They were doing service in the temple. And then they gave their service up because of various reasons. And then Krishna makes it very difficult for them to get their service back. Or they have wonderful association. They give their association up. Krishna makes it very, very difficult for them to get that association. So that is good fear. That is the kind of fear that will help us turn away from the material fear and take us towards Krishna. So I'll stop here, see if you have any concluding thoughts or comments. Hare Krishna, uh, Prabhuji. Uh, I just thinking, Prabhuji, that uh, we talked about freedom last time and uh, we talked about uh, fear this time. And at some point in time, we have also talked about proud, being proud as a virtue. So all of these things are, Prabhuji, so connected, right? And it is easier said than done, but to find the right balance that what we should be envy of, what should we be proud of, and what should we be fearful of, and what should we be fearful of not. I mean, it is it is complex to theoretically even understand, but I think through experience, through shelter, and I think through right association, that is the only way we can overcome and find the right balance. Otherwise, it's easy to get digressed uh, because these are very strong virtues. Right, right. They're very deep-rooted. The, the, I guess the proof of the pudding is in the eating. So we can, the, the philosophy is kind of like, like a road map, right? It tells you, go down the road, turn right, turn left, and there is a beautiful lake over there. But in order to experience that lake, you have to walk down that path. Otherwise, you can be looking at the map, map all day around you. It's not going to help you. So, um, these topics are very relevant for practicing devotees. Because they are doing both. They are looking at the map. And they are also walking. So, so, which is why a lot of what is being shared is experiential. And it's very interesting to me that it so much resonates with what is also presented from a theoretical perspective. Okay, so if there are no further questions, then uh, we can... Uh... Thank you, Mr. Prabhuji. Yes, Prabhu. Prabhuji, one question that I had, if I may. Um, if not, then that is okay, if you are running out of time. Go ahead, Prabhu. So, um, quickly then, Prabhuji, um, it is actually very similar to Rajdish Prabhu's question. So, you know, as you said, whatever is happening or whatever will happen, um, it is happening because of Krishna. If we constantly think about that, then there's really, fear becomes, it really pales in insignificance, right? Yeah. So, um, so for that, I feel we must be constantly thinking and constantly absorbed in Krishna, if uh, I understand it correctly. And uh, yet there are these uncalled for calamities that do come from outside. Or even like from within, there are so many pushings that do come uh, in the middle of nowhere. When you, are, you feel that your devotional services are going um, as per uh, the the instructions given by your Shiksha Gurus or Diksha Gurus. Um, in such situations, how do we have that constant remembrance of Krishna, Prabhuji, and that high-level uh, consciousness? It's a it's a good question. It's probably it's probably good as a as a as a topic for for discussion in itself. That how do we have this constant remembrance, the whole process of uh, the whole process of uh, sadhana vedi bhakti 
is, uh, is designed to achieve this purpose. Rupa Goswami says that uh, the purpose of, of bhakti is to achieve two things. That you should always remember Krishna and you should never forget Krishna. And uh, um, uh, the short answer to your question is by strictly following the process of devotional service, the results will come on their own. So we cannot sit and will ourselves that from morning to evening we will think about Krishna. That's not going to happen. But if we follow the process, the process of chanting, deity worship, Swadhyay, reading of the scriptures, Archivigra Seva, Vaishnav Seva. So the, the process that has been given to us, simple process, straightforward process, not very difficult to do. But the result is guaranteed. That as you follow the process, your, your, uh, the, the degree of your remembrance of Krishna will happen. And as we get increasingly purified by the process, then that remembrance happens spontaneously. When we reach the stage of Raguna Bhakti or Ragatmika or Bhava Bhakti, then at that stage, then the remembrance is the natural, is the is a is a is a natural state. But until that happens, we have the process. The scriptures are there to help us. Krishna is there to help us. He has given us very, very specific guidelines. He, does, he hasn't left us in the limbo, saying, just try and remember about me. Just try and remember and hope everything works out okay. No. He has given us specific guidance, specific do's, specific don'ts. And following that process, Krishna gives us guarantee that he will stay in our remembrance. So we are running out of time now. It's almost nine. Uh, maybe we can take it offline. I wanted the the children to come and do the nursing of their prayer. I'm calling Nayoshi now. <laughs> okay. Hello, Nayoshi. 